A story that has been around since the 1800s is the perfect showcase of good and evil. Catalina Foothills High School Theater Department is bringing it to the stage just in time for Halloween. Mary McCabe and Ryan Callie are here to tell us and show us a piece of their production of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Welcome to you both this morning. Thank you. Thank you. So I know I love, I love this story, but what's different about your version? Well, what's different about this version is that there are, it's not just Jekyll and Hyde. There's actually four types of Hyde, which is really interesting. Um, yeah, so the four types of Hyde kind of represent the different personalities you have. So I think it's really cool that, so you're having, not only are you having just like the doctor and the, like, the evil men, you're having these four different personalities and they kind of represent all of his different sides to him. Oh. Well, who do you each play and how did you prepare for your specific roles? Well, what's interesting about this is that we all play a number of characters. Oh. So, um, in this scene, I'll be playing uh, Dr. Lanyon. And I'm, I play Dr. Jekyll, and then I also play um, one of the Hydes on, uh, also. So. Yeah, so it's just, it's a bunch of people acting like, it's just, it's fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we're saying this show is perfect for Halloween time, but who do you really recommend come see your show? Um, so the show is a little bit dark for younger kids, so I would say anyone over 10, but also anyone that really likes um, mystery and suspense. It has a lot of that. Throughout the show, you're kind of wondering what's going on because there's a lot of um, ambiguity in the show that they put there on purpose, which I really mm -hmm. love. Well, I, I, I'm hearing that you guys are talking about each one of you have different roles, and you guys, was that hard? Was that a hard process to get this all together, um, being so many different roles? Yeah, I mean, it's always a challenge to pick yeah. up a role, especially the multiple ones we have, but I mean, it's just looking at the relationships, reading really intently into the script, what the author meant by it. It's just, it's been really fun to work with that. Kind of like a challenge as an actor. Yeah. Yes. You know a little bit about that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I know we're about to see a little bit from the show, but I'm wondering, you know, as an actor, you know, what <laughs> got, got you involved in the theater? Why is this something that interests you? Um, so I, act, I like, love the idea of playing different characters. I mean, I'm 16. Who could ever who could ever imagine I'd be playing a doctor <laughs> right. at age 16. I think yeah. that's just really interesting to play all these different people. And it's just fun. It's really interesting to look at all these different pieces and notice what's different, what's similar about the characters, and it's, it's just fun. It's just fun. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody where they can uh, come and see, but I know we're going to get a sneak peek here in just a few mm -hmm. moments. So, again, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Catalina Foothills High School opens on October 30th for a complete schedule of their performances. You can log on to tinyurl.com slash theater or call 209-8300 for more information. And now here is a preview of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Notes from the interview between H.K. Lanyon and Dr. X. It was the middle of the night, and as usual, I couldn't sleep, so I went downstairs when... Jekyll, good God, man, do you know the time? I assumed a Scotsman wouldn't waste good oil on empty rooms. You look like the morgue. Sit, I'll No, I you... need to consult you about a patient. You haven't been a practicing physician for years. Your preference, as I recall, is lecturing on the stupidity of your colleagues. Special case, he came to me. I couldn't say no. Tell me the history. I need to ask you on your oath to hold what I impart confidential. You knew I'd keep your confidence when you saw the lamplight. I can't name the patient. I can't even name his condition. It has no name. Imagine him a drunkard or an opium fiend just as a, con just as a metaphor for his condition. If I told you this man's first experience with these spirits, these opiates, was an experiment, that he was testing himself as much as he was testing the effects on him, would you believe that? Bad ends often have innocent, albeit misguided, beginnings. And if I told you this man was fully aware of his actions under the influence, no matter how deep he lost himself in his debauchery, would you believe that as well? Of course, the pleasure he experiences from his debaucheries is the point. Well, of late there's been a change. Of late there have been occasions when, when you can't recall what's occurred in one of these states. It's as if, a hand, it's if, his, it's if, his, uh, it's as if his hand has pulled down a shade to block his view. Hours seem to pass, and try as he may, he can't recur, uh, recall what's occurred. The most he can recollect are shadow sounds, a name. Is there a term for that? Yes. It's called, in its Latin root, a blackout. Jekyll, a drunkard forgets, an opium eater hallucinates. It's symptomatic of the addiction. My patient is not an addict. Of course he is. You nearly quoted the textbook. No, there must be another answer. None but the obvious. If he's not lost to spirits or narcotics, then the source of his condition is internal. The man is mad. A danger to himself and to others. And consequently, not the sort one can treat in a consulting room. What do you mean? Henry 
Do you have reason to fear for your patient's safety or the safety of others? Yes.